Harbor Hoist Triton Series Control, Valve Troubleshooting and Replacement. To verify the valve isn't opening properly, remove the hose to the valve that is suspected to be bad. Use the express raise mode that will turn on the blower and open all the valves. To do this, press and hold the level and raise buttons together for 3 seconds. Verify that all valve zone LEDs on the front panel are illuminated. Then verify air is coming out of the suspect valve. If it is, then the valve is good. If it does not open before moving forward, take a small wrench and tap on the end of the nipple. The valve may have some small debris lodged in the seal area, keeping it from opening. This may free up the debris. If this does not work, we will now review the main circuit board connections for issues. Remove the screws around sides and bottom of the control housing. Note: Leave the top screw on each side of the control, so this can act as a hinge to rotate the enclosure backwards on the control chassis. Remove the four screws on the inside of the front housing that hold the faceplate module. Push on the studs to push the module out of the front housing. Unwind the module to loosen up the cable bundle to allow for easy access to the wires. Note, remember to rewind the cable bundle back up during reassembly for easy installation. Plug in the control power cord. Warning, do not touch any high voltage area as indicated on the main control board. Put the control in express down mode by holding the lower and level buttons together for 3 seconds. You should observe that both the front cover and main control board valve zone LEDs should all be illuminated. When the LEDs above the valve zone connectors are illuminated, they are supplying power to the valve. Verify the valve is opening correctly. Verify the connection of the valve leads to the main control board are secure. If the valve is still not opening, then we must replace the valve. Note a secondary method to verify valve is bad. You can also connect the wire leads of the valve to a new 9 volt battery. The red lead is the positive. If the valve is good, it should open when connected and closed when disconnected. The next step should be with power disconnected from the control. Remove the valve leads from the connection on the main control board. Feed the valve cable through the watertight gland in the front housing. Remove the zip ties holding the cable in place. Remove the blower motor bracket that connects it to the back chassis. Observe how this is assembled so you can reinstall it properly. It is critical that the spacer is installed properly so the blower can get sufficient airflow. Next, remove the four bolts holding the air manifold to the back chassis. Remove the air manifold assembly by grabbing it at the air box and the blower motor and lifting it in an outward and upward direction. Make sure before moving the valve, observe its orientation on the air manifold. It is important to place the new valve back in its same orientation so the assembly will go back together properly. Remove the valve retainer clip by loosening the bolts. The valve should now be able to be pulled out of the manifold. Replace the new valve in its proper orientation and secure the retainer clip with its two bolts. Realign the manifold's valves with the openings in the bottom of the chassis. Slide the manifold assembly downward into the chassis until the manifold brackets are aligned with the holes in the back of the chassis. Reinstall the two spacer plates and four bolts that secure the air manifold assembly to the rear of the chassis. Reinstall the bolt and spacer that secures the blower to the rear of the chassis. Note the spacer must be reinstalled for the blower to work properly. Reroute the valve cable through the housing and feed it back through the watertight gland. Coil the valve wires back into a bundle and use zip ties to secure. Trim the excess wire ties with a pair of wire cutters. Then tuck the bundle behind the air manifold assembly out of the way. Reconnect the valve leads to the main control board. Note, the red lead should be connected to the positive connection on the board. Verify that they are secure by slightly tugging on the wires. Plug in the control power cord. Warning, do not touch any high voltage area as indicated on the main control board. 
Before reassembling the control, put the control in express down mode by holding the lower and level buttons together for 3 seconds. You should observe that both the front cover and mainboard valve zone LEDs should all be illuminated. Verify that the new valve is opening and working properly. Before installing the faceplate module back into the front housing, twist the module a couple of times to wind the cables into a bundle. It will be easier to manage the wires as you are installing the faceplate module. Replace the forward lock nuts that hold the faceplate to the front housing and tighten. Replace the screws around the perimeter of the front housing 